So this is a guide to visual abstracts. I will be presenting the first half on introduction to visual abstracts, and Ginny will be going through visual abstracts in practice. Now, what is a visual abstract? Um, I think it's pretty clear in the term itself. It is usually a concise summary of the main findings of the article. This, and it has personalized graphs, tables, and figures that you can put into the visual abstract itself. Now, these are some key things to consider. Um, a visual abstract is usually very brief. There are about five to seven sentences in the whole entire graphic, um, with each sentence not going over 15 words. There should be a lot of white space in the visual abstract itself so that the audience can have a lot of time to consider what it is that the message that they're taking in. And of course, in terms of the visual data, this is supposed to represent something that is the result or the conclusion of the study itself. And at the bottom, you'll see that there is a section for the citation, the title, and the copyright line. Now, this is super important because while the visual abstract may not have the full title of your article itself, this section down here at the bottom definitely will, and it'll be able to tell everybody where they can find the article if they choose to search for it on Google Scholar or any other search engine they find. The next one is, why do we even use a visual abstract? Um, like, what's the purpose? Um, and there are multiple reasons to produce one, uh, to share your research, to maximize visibility, and most notably on social media. Uh, the bulk of the research done on visual abstracts goes back to one author, Dr. Andrew Abraham. He did a study for Annals of Surgery in 2017 on 22 articles, and each of these articles were tweeted once without the visual abstract and then again with the visual abstract. The tweet that had the visual abstract was shared eight more times than the tweet without the visual abstract that only included a link to the article. Other studies have been done um, with varying results. For example, uh, for one done by Journal of Plastic Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgery, they showed that the articles were read at least two times more when tweeted with a visual abstract. I think this goes to show that a lot of the engagement surrounded through visual abstracts is really helpful to kind of maximize the discussion around the scientific community. Now we're going into who creates a visual abstract. Uh, a bulk of the time, authors will be asked to create the visual abstract. Sometimes an editor may reach out to an author with support. So either someone on the journal itself who is a social media manager, if the author does not have this kind of help, they're also free to ask their interns or their fellows or ask a third party service to help them create the visual abstract or to create it fully. And this kind of goes into when should we create a visual abstract? A visual abstract is created when um, it's directed as directed in the submission guidelines. So before you even start looking at what specifications you might need for a visual abstract, check the submission guidelines. Some journals may require it at submission, journals like Cell Press. Most journals will require it either at the accepted manuscript stage, at a revision stage, or sometimes also after publication, because we don't know exactly if the visual abstracts will be in the articles themselves or just shared on social media. It's always, always crucial to check the submission guidelines. Um, and here are just some tools that Ginny and I pulled up to help you create the visual abstract itself. Now, a lot of these visual abstracts will be created on a PowerPoint slide um, so that you can read them from left to right or top to bottom. And out of these, I really recommend the Noun Project if you are going to use PowerPoint. These, uh, the Noun Project has almost every icon that you can think of, and you really just have to be creative about what you're exactly trying to show. 
Um, all of the other ones on this list, like Mind the Graph, Canva, Easily, Infogram, these are usually uh, ones that you choose to do on the platform itself. So not on PowerPoint, but you're using a dedicated template on these other websites. Thank you.